Today's reading from chapter 14 of Matthew's Gospel speaks to my own fears and anxieties about the present, but also gives me hope for the months ahead. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. Jesus came toward his disciples, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus coming to the rescue of his disciples in a boat during a terrible storm seems like a welcome metaphor for us today in the context of so many uncertainties about the future. Do not be afraid, Jesus says to his followers. This story was also told in Mark's gospel, but Matthew makes some additions. The key to understanding Matthew's message is found by looking closely at the differences in the two accounts. Professor Richard Hayes of Duke University Divinity School notes that Matthew differs in a few significant ways with the older traditions of Paul and Mark. Paul and Mark anticipated a more imminent future second coming with the resurrection of the dead and God's final judgment. Matthew shares this eschatology. However, according to Hayes, one factor that allows Matthew to settle more patiently into the present age is his conviction that the risen Lord is present in and with his church. Matthew assures his readers in numerous ways of the powerful and abiding presence of Jesus with his people. The first chapter of Matthew's Gospel included this line, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. As we try to live as Christians, surrounded by the many moral and spiritual challenges of our times, we can take heart in Matthew's assertion that the one called God with us speaks to us, saying, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. However, Matthew adapts this story of Jesus walking on the water in another significant way. In Matthew's account, Jesus is not the only character in the story to walk on water. As the text continues, Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? On this passage, Professor Hayes writes that this story is, first of all, an exhortation to askew doubt. What doubt? Peter becomes frightened. He loses trust in Jesus, and he begins to sink. I'm thinking about this gospel passage in light of our present historical context, a context of fear, born of the uncertainty over the future of the pandemic, our doubt that life will ever return to normal, and the psychological consequences of ongoing social isolation. We fear leaving our homes and engaging with others. We fear the loss of friendships or familial bonds that have been tested by the necessary social isolation. We fear that others will not understand when we not say we're not comfortable going out. We fear the further loss of income or our livelihood. And we fear that divisions in our country are too deep and irreparable. We doubt it will get better. The Gospel of Matthew makes an important claim that has become a bedrock of our faith. We believe that God is with us now. We believe that Jesus comes to us in our distress as he walked toward the disciples on the stormy waters. He asks us, as he asked Peter, to trust in him and to have faith. 
Jesus appeared to his disciples in the middle of a storm and in the midst of their fears. God is with us in our fears and in our hopes. God is with us in our solitude and in our communities. God is with us when we suffer injustice and in our struggle for a better world. Rather than cowering in our boats, let us together, with faith and hope, rise up to meet Jesus on the waters.